Well, and I'm happy that you're emotionally pain-free because coming out probably had to be a battle that you had with yourself first. Yes. Um, and then second, maybe something that I, I, I'd be interested in knowing, like when did you have to grapple with it yourself in addition to your physicality? And, and that's a lot to bear at one time. So did you compartmentalize? How did you do that? Yeah, it was, it was obviously a very isolating journey as things continued to progress. Um, you know, the, the injury obviously in reality delayed kind of the inevitable of, of realizing who you were. Mm. And, you know, it, 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 it hits everyone at a different time, right? Some people know when they're five, some people don't know until they're 40, right? So for me, um, the, the realization and the, the, the dealing with it internally of that, you know, oblique moment w was COVID because I had just moved to a new city. Um, of course, I didn't know many people work, you know, I started a new job with the Kings, but I'd only been there for three months, COVID hits. And then, you know, you're by yourself a ton. I live with an assistant, but you know, not that type of relationship of just opening up the, the floodgates of, of emotions. So for me, it was kind of that realization. And then it was the, the process of having overcame so much with the injury, both physically and mentally, mm -hmm. it felt like the same type of hurdle of, yeah. okay, when I got injured, it was the reality of physically, this is where you're at, but also there's still life to live. There's so many positives and, and you just have to, to work on yourself, both mentally, but obviously physically, of course, to, to be able to get back so much what you can um, from a physical standpoint with the injury. With the, the coming out process, it was the same emotional hurdle of knowing how much work I had to do on myself um, to be comfortable, to be proud of who I was, to embrace it. You know, that was a, a long process and it was unfortunately a very dark road by myself until I, you know, sought therapy and, and was able to start telling people and um, you know, it gets easier when you start telling more people and, you know, obviously being supported um, was huge from, from my family, uh, my friends. And obviously when you're by yourself for so long, especially in COVID, and I had so many different factors that played into it of the what ifs when it came to coming out of my foundation supporters, you know, would they agree with that lifestyle or what if they didn't? And how would that support be? Or everyone who obviously grew up watching me and supporting me, whether it was financially donating at any point in time in life to, to myself or the foundation or just, you know, praying for me or whatever it was. There were so many different people that I knew the story kind of affected, um, at least the storyline. Um, so you didn't want to really disappoint anyone, but at the same time, it was hard to grapple that with focusing on yourself. I was going to say, you don't, with your foundation, mm -hmm. many people may not know, you made that concerted change from believe in miracles yep. to believe. Yep. Because doing the hard work, mm -hmm. getting the stimulation, you know, which yep. we'll talk about, um, that's hard work. That's science. Yeah. Um, how were those conversations to go from like, okay, I, I formed this amazing foundation, but let's now yeah. take, in, in lack of a better term, the next step because you mm -hmm. want to take a physical step. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when you go back to December 30th, 2011, when I was injured, at that time with where science was, it, it seemed like you needed a miracle yeah. to, to improve life, whether it was getting more hand function and arm function to obviously the eventual goal of, of beating paralysis and getting out of the chair. And as our foundation and obviously foundations across America and the world continue to, to fund spinal cord injury research, we realized that it no longer needs to be a miracle. We have science. It went from believe in miracles to believe in science and recovery yep. because of the progress that our foundation made with Mayo Clinic and uh, the University of Louisville and UCLA, all the top spinal cord injury doctors and, you know, facilities in the world with who we've been able to be fortunate to support projects and, and trial studies with. We have epidural stimulation that has taken a guy who's been a paraplegic to being able to walk the length of a football field by himself with a walker. We've been able to take people like myself who struggled to 
be able to, to pick up grapes and feed myself to being completely comfortable and second nature of just grabbing things and being able to, to feed myself food or be able to take my shirt off, uh, things that all take a lot of help with someone in the spinal cord injury world. Um, it's, it's awesome. Uh, I'm so proud of what my foundation and, and everyone that's been a part of it, whether they've been on the board and, and put in all the time at the meetings or the doctors we've worked with, um, to anyone who obviously has supported, come to an event or, or financially donated. Um, you know, we're, we're proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish. We're, we're just getting started. Um, you know, I talk about how I'm in it for the long haul, both from a physical standpoint of wanting to beat it, but also from a standpoint of raising awareness and funds for the foundation to be able to, to be able to beat paralysis. And, you know, year to date, we've raised over $5 million, which we're extremely proud of. Um, and hopefully, Congrats. you know, cheers to the next five in a, in a quicker manner. And many people may not realize four years Mm -hmm. You were raising these funds for awareness for these clinical mm -hmm. trials that you were never a part of. No, I, for is at yeah. least seven of the. Uh, years, I mean, what eight? we're we're twelve years plus into the the foundation and yeah. probably the first uh, ten years. Like I had no, you know. Of course, as the medical world continues to improve and grow, and we learn more, you're benefiting because we're getting closer, right? Right. But I never was a part of a trial study, whether it was me being ineligible or it just wasn't, you know, my time to, to be able to, to try to improve my life. The, the ultimate goal is getting the 300 plus thousand Americans a year who live with paralysis with a spinal cord injury to improve their lives and eventually out of their chairs. And I'm one of them. Of course, I've been fortunate to have such an opportunity to have a voice and to be a speaker on behalf of them. Mm -hmm. but. You know, again, like I mentioned earlier, I'm still dealing with paralysis just like everyone else is. And as much as I want it, uh, the next person does as well. So to be able to have an opportunity to give back and help everyone who's in the same situation as me is is something that I'm very proud of. And, and it's obviously very humbling to be someone who's kind of a, a you know, the a chosen speaker um, for that population. What is